All right, welcome to the stage. Uh, a good friend of mine, if you're from Chicago area, uh, Bill Grosser has been all around the Chicago area, teaches teachers, teaches the STEM conference now, the MSI, Golden Apple winner, um, and just an all-around good guy that will, uh, he, he'd be the worst poker player in the world. Um, and the reason he'd be the worst poker player in the world is because he'd be playing with you and he'd look over in your hand and he'd see you need a jack to make a full house and he'd hand it to you uh, and you'd end up winning. So, um, Bill Grosser, everybody. That's nice. Well, thanks. It's fun to be here. It's fun to um, be presenting before teachers. This first thing I want to show you is called a, a giant balloon blower upper. It's not real technical what it does. Um, but the, um, how it came to be, I think, is a really good story for teachers, especially if you're a young teacher out there. Um, one of the, my first day, I walked into a classroom, and Lee Merrick was my supervising teacher. And that's where I started teaching. And he brought me to Chem West, and I started seeing all these people doing demos. And uh, this is my giant balloon blower upper. And the first time I saw it, it was about a foot long pipe, and somebody dumped liquid nitrogen in it, and it blew up this balloon. I said, oh, that is the coolest thing ever. So I got the idea there, and then I went back home and talked to my brother, who's an electrician. I said, hey, Ed, can you make me a pipe that I can pour stuff in it'll blow up balloons? And he came back with this. <laughs> I was like, well, it's a little bigger. But uh, Lee also taught me anytime you can scale things up, it's usually a lot more fun. So what I use this for is, is it really does a nice job showing uh, how gases expand when they go from the liquid phase to the gas phase. And I, I use that FET with my kids where, you know, a solid liquid gas, that's cool. But if you follow it up with this, it's like, whoa, that's really cool. So here's all you need is um, a little liquid nitrogen. Uh, and we have found actually a supplier by our school that that will give us liquid nitrogen, or they sell it to us. So if you write a grant or something like that, this is the expensive part of it, is getting this. And there's a lot of great labs you can do with liquid nitrogen. It's always a good day when you have liquid nitrogen in your classroom. So here's all we need is a little liquid nitrogen. And uh, then we're going to take the liquid nitrogen and pour it down this end of the tube. And there should be enough heat energy in that metal to take all that liquid, vaporize it, turn it into a gas. As it turns into a gas, we should be able to capture that in these three balloons. And I usually like to turn it into a little competition. I hope you'll help me out and maybe play along. Um, we'll play uh, this blue balloon for this side of the room. There we go. All right. Thank you. This uh, orange balloon for this side of the balloon. Or this side. And uh, the green balloon for all the administrators out there. Is there... All right, all right, so here we go. Um, <laughs> sorry, Mike. Uh, so <sighs> feel free to cheer. It does help the balloons a little bit. Maybe a little bit more nitrogen in there. <sighs> Just don't breathe the nitrogen if it spills there. <sighs> all right. <sighs> Got to measure very carefully. <sighs> There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, it does help if you cheer. I think. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, 600 times those gas molecules actually expand 600 times or more when they turn into a gas when they spread out like that. The, the administrators need uh, Mike. I'm not sure what to say about them. But there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's the giant balloon blower upper. Highly technical. All right. The, um, the next demonstration is uh, really one of my favorites. This rocked my world the first time I saw it. Um, the credit, I think, goes to Jim and Julie Early out of New Jersey. That's who uh, Flynn credits for this. But it's a catalyst demonstration, and uh, most of you are familiar with the um, elephant's toothpaste demonstration for catalysts. Goes all over the place. If you're not Google elephant's toothpaste, you'll find it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, ever since the Chicago fire thing yeah. and, and Mrs. O'Leary's cow was yeah. put on the catalyst, we can't mention that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm not sure how to respond to that, but I shared a room with him for a while too, you know. 
Um, so, <laughs> so, so at the heart of this, what this really is, is just peroxide, and it's going to decompose and make a lot of oxygen. And there's some intermediate steps that with my uh, honors classes we talk about. Um, are you ready for that? Kevin McKittrick, everybody here to help uh, heat, the, heat the solution up. <laughs> so we have a, a sodium-potassium tartrate solution uh, that's going to go in here first, and you get it up to about 70 degrees. And what I like about this catalyst demonstration is a couple things. It not only shows how the reaction goes faster, but if you teach ChemCom like I do, they talk in there about how a catalyst also lowers the activation energy, so it takes place at a lower temperature. So if we, um, oh, let me get one more measured out. We, uh, with the Blues Brothers dancing up here, we didn't want to have it out ahead of time. <laughs> All right, so there's the catalyst. So the pink is the catalyst. Um, and we're going to mix these two together. This has the peroxide in it, so this is going to start generating the oxygen. And when we put that in there, if you zoom in on that down here, you can see it might start to decompose now. But the reaction actually goes very slow. But at the same temperature, if I add the catalyst, we should start to see things speed up. So the other two things that I really like about this is, number one, it shows how at that same temperature we've lowered the activation energy, so that reaction is starting to go. The other thing is that catalyst was what color? It was, it was red, right? So the other thing we always teach kids is, oh, yeah, catalyst doesn't get used up in a reaction, but we never show that. So as this reaction gets going, and uh, honestly, this is only the second time I've done it this big, so I'm, I'm hoping it's... Uh, not too crazy. <laughs> but that catalyst was uh, that pink color. And, <laughs> oh, well, it's, <laughs> sorry, tell them sorry about the cleanup there. But the, uh, <laughs> so that, I think you got a little over 70 there, Kevin. But the, uh, the catalyst was the pink color, so when we're, <laughs> it was spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> when, we're, when we're done, if we really teach the kids the catalyst should come back, if you zoom in on this carefully, you should see that catalyst come back. And I like the slow pace that it occurs because it allows that to process in those kids' head. And they're saying, I don't see pink, Mr. Grosser. I don't see pink. Show me that pink again. And if we wait and wait and wait, what, what time are we done? Let's see. <laughs> well, all right, Carl. Carl, you and I are teammates here. So that's two demos, uh, the bad demos. Uh, normally, if you just follow the directions out of the book. And <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to leave it here for a little bit. We'll see. But ideally, man, it's awesome. The pink color comes back at the end, and the kids are, oh, see. So if his bubbles work now, maybe later on mine will turn back pink. We'll leave it up there. But there we go. There you go. Pink catalyst. So thanks.